Welcome to Soul Rising. We're your hosts, Amy and Erin. We're two everyday mediums who are passionate about taking the woo-woo out of spirituality and bringing it down to earth. So put the kettle on, grab a chair, and join us. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Soul Rising Podcast. Soul Rising Podcast. Last week, Erin shared about Atlantis a bit. Um, Today, I'm going to share a little bit about Lemuria. I really like the Lemurians. Um, I do feel like I connect with the Lemurians, uh, the Pleiadians. I know last week, Erin, you shared a little bit like you don't really resonate too much with the starseed thing. And I thought that was an important share because not everybody does. And actually, I never did either until kind of recently. Yeah, it's been a, a more of a thing like it's not like I sought out the idea of star seeds or I was like looking to it just kind of came to me, which I think is why I resonate with it more because it's happened organically rather than being influenced uh, in some way. But it's also interesting too because I know um, you know, I like Rebecca Campbell a lot. She's yeah, a, I... an author and she like some of her decks, which I know you have, but there's one called starseed right and then there's a a book like like euro starseed and uh, i resonate with those books and um, i feel like rebecca campbell um her her connection is with the pleiadians as well and with lemuria mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the very like divine feminine kind of energy yeah yeah um, yeah i feel although i mean they're balanced a balance between the masculine and the feminine but i will i guess just start um telling you what i do know i get let's start asking do you what do you know about lemuria if anything just yet uh a, a um lost civilization similar to atlantis um, and they were advanced as well that's all i know that's literally it yeah that's uh that's well that's kind of yeah and that it's somehow connected to Atlantis, like they're kind of connected like in the sense that they're both kind of lost civilizations or that they were both advanced uh civilizations in some way and, and islands right uh um yeah so so i'll t- first off but tell you this the things that i do know about lemuria have come from books um and also channeling my own personal channeling so i will just preface to say that i might share some things that have come through for me personally but i was really drawn last spring like i said um i shared a little bit recently that um i have um taken reiki level one and level two so i'm now a reiki practitioner um and i haven't I have been offering some Reiki to Yay! some people at times, but yeah, I haven't um, been, um, it's not like an offering just yet. At my, I'm, I'm actually coming up with some things that I can infuse Reiki in, in my offerings. So I can provide both, but um, my Reiki master actually, um, who's going to be a future um, guest on our podcast at some point, her name is Kate Flick and she is um, an Akashic records reader and uh, Reiki master. Anyways, I took my Reiki training with her and we kind of connected last, I want to say like, we were following each other, but I feel like the first time that we really started to interact with each other may have been like last spring. Mm, Okay. And uh, I took part in uh, like, I I know this seems off topic, but it's kind of connected. Um, I took part in a like free Ricky healing experience that she was uh, hosting. She's done quite a few and I've attended all but one of them since. And in this first one, I had this overwhelming feeling that her and I were connected. Um, and the concept of Pallades and the Pleiadians came to me through a meditative experience during one of her free, uh, Reiki, um, experiences. So after it, I kind of reached out and I was like, I don't know like what you feel about this or if you would agree, but I feel as if you and I are connected in some way through this Palladian kind of energy concept. And she's like, yeah, actually, like I've connected to, like she said, she connected to her own Akashic records and that she feels like she does have Palladian roots. And I was like, whoa, cool. And then um, there's been a few other people, including Emily, who was here with Emily and and her stars. We had a really interesting, cool thing happened where I bought this book soon after my interaction with Kate and the Palladian kind of energy came through to me organically. I bought this book, which is called Bringers of the Dawn, teachings from the Pleiadians. It's a channeled book by Barbara Marchinek. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Um, And with Emily, the weird story with her is I read this and 
I felt this, we- I had never interacted with Emily before. Never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We followed each other on Facebook. That was it. Or not Facebook, Instagram. I was reading the, the foreword to this book and I had this overwhelming feeling. I kept seeing her in my mind's eye. And I had this overwhelming feeling. I need to message her and I need to send her this like little snippet from this book. And so I did. That's how Emily and I met. Whoa. So her, I know it's uh, Emily and her stars. So she was here. Yeah. For she's here for her. Pop- yeah. yeah. Um, and I did. And she's like, whoa, Amy, how do you know I'm so into Pleiadians and Lemuria? And I was like, I don't know. Something's connecting me. Like something was like telling me to reach out to you. And then I share the snippet I shared with her um, in this forward. It, it was talking about how the, the person that, you know, authored this, that channeled the information. Um, she had this experience. I feel like she said she gave a date, May 15th. And so I sent this to her. And then after the fact, they went, whoa, today is May 15th. And Emily goes, and it's my birthday. And I was like, what? So it's just been weird. And I, I, it's been weird. It's, it's been weird. Okay. And then last week when I was doing my, getting attuned to Reiki, um, a few of the things that I was experiencing, because if with Reiki, it's like the, the Reiki energy, for those of you who aren't familiar and, and we're going to have Kate on so she can speak more, uh, you know, from a personal, from a more experienced lens of what Reiki is, but it's universal life force energy and it's an intelligent energy. And it's, it's not that a person is like channeling per se and like bringing through, it's like that the Reiki is, is the thing that's in charge. It's the thing that's bringing, showing you the vision. Oh, that's bringing, okay. It's the Reiki that's doing it. Reiki um, is the um, energy Reiki, itself. Reiki is the energy. It's universal life force energy. And Reiki is, so when somebody like learns Reiki, it's, it's, it's really what it is, is like you could study and read Reiki. It would not make you a Reiki practitioner. You have to be attuned from somebody that's already attuned to the energy and then they attune you. So it has to be passed from teacher to student. Yeah. Cool. Um, which is cool, I think. Anyways, uh, so that's the weird kind of thing, how it's come organically to me. I really resonate with this whole book. It was like Highlighter City. For those of you on YouTube, I was like, whoa, my mind is going the whole time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Palladians also. So like, this is the seven stars, you know, the seven sisters. This is the logo for the Subaru, right? The car. Oh, is um, it? Yeah. I so no this, is, this is the Pallades, like constellation. Do you have the Subaru? Um, no, I don't. I'm a Volkswagen <laughs> driver, but maybe one day. <laughs> Sorry. Um, cool. Yeah, I just thought that was cool. But I really resonated with a lot of information with the book and, and just my ideas of consciousness and spirituality and like, you know, innate spiritual truths really resonate with Pleiadians. Okay. So um, what I was going to say is quickly uh, about this Reiki experience last weekend is that uh, there was a few uh, in, in meditation, a few visitations in which I, uh, was seeing light beings. Okay. And these light beings were forms, but they were, you know, light, not like human form. And they, once they came to me in, they were blue and the second time in green. And so Kate was like, yeah, you're with the Pleiadians. Cause she felt that too. And Pleiadians are uh, often said to be blue. Why I bring up Pleiades first is because, um, these two books, so again, this is based on experience of reading these books, um, which have both been channeled. So the second book is called The Women of Lemuria. And it's been channeled by um, somebody called Cryon. Cryon? And um, this is a huge thing. Like they come, they travel all around the world. I feel like I've heard Cryon. I feel like I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like a spiritual, um, a spiritual being that would be channeled through a a living, uh, a man. Yeah. So, Anyhow, the reason that these two are connected is because um, what is channeled and brought through in these books is that the Pleiadians were these star beings, right? Like star mother, um, highly intelligent, um, a huge expanded like consciousness, you know, the highest it could be. And that um, they would have wanted to bring that consciousness to Gaia, to Mother Earth. Okay, so according to some research, um, the Pleiadians would have come to earth about 200,000 years ago. Okay. So at this time, again, according to the channelings in this book, earth was, um, you know, not developed, not civilized. Um, 
there was human beings, but human beings were more animalistic. Uh, they would have been um, almost like Neanderthals in a way. So, you know, like um, essentially animalistic, right? Like just kind of surviving. And um, that the Lemurians, how they're connected to the Pleiadians is that the Pleiadians would have come to Earth, to Gaia, for the purpose of bringing consciousness to human beings and they be this they believe that the first conscious human beings would have come from lemuria this landmass so it would have been star beings coming and procreating with the existing human beings to create a new human being one with consciousness and according to this book everybody has had a lifetime on lemuria because we all have consciousness we're all spiritual beings. So I find that interesting. Um, and it's, it's another thing to say, like when you identify as a certain star being, I think that, you know, it's not like you would have only been that star being. I feel like you can be many, many right? Like, things, but yeah. anyhow, so that's kind of like how these two relate, the Pleiadians and the Lemurians. Um, do you have any questions about that before I? No, but when you say, when you say uh, they came to earth, are we talking like they came in like a spaceship or they came, they came like uh, through like being incarnated to earth? Like being so at how I interpreted similar to it like today was more like they were that star being entity. Like they weren't, they weren't human beings themselves. But they were on so earth. I don't, yeah. And it like came to Lemuria. Yeah. yeah. What they okay. So Lemuria was this, um, reported land mass um some people will refer to it as a land bridge that would have connected um you know like the um the north america with uh you know australia indonesia like all those places would have connected in some way been a land bridge although i don't think that they found evidence that it actually has connected it but it's been referred to as a land bridge um in this book the women of lemuria it's also been said that um Lemuria would have like encompassed um the area that's now Hawaii and that um so there's a lot of Palladian Lemurian kind of um groups and societies and belief systems in Hawaii okay and definitely in the Pacific Ocean there's another place in California called Mount Shasta which is said to be a very um Palladian yeah. place yeah um, that as I well. heard yeah 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 okay. yeah so um you know, it's just like very intelligent, spiritually um, advanced, conscious kind of beings. They would have come and taught, tried to, you know, create this or did a, create this new type of human um, to then, you know, evolve consciousness here on Earth. So that's the connection between the two of them. Um, now, some characteristics of the Lemurians, what I found online was, let me see, sorry, I've got it in here. My goodness, where is it? I can't find my notes right now, so I'm just going to have to go up. Oh, here we go. Um, in the physical sense, uh, they've been said to kind of been... Um, so, sorry, I forgot to say, the Lemurians then would be these new spiritually conscious humans. They would have looked more like human, but they would have kind of had that star being conscious, conscious right? And, awareness. And, okay, so this is kind of the the um, this person's image of what image of what they believe they looked like okay so i what i've heard many many times is much much taller than us uh the taller than average human, interesting much bigger human um androgynous in, in in some ways in the sense that the um a balance between the masculine and the energy um, in terms of their physical appearance. But something that I remember reading about in this book was how the women were highly revered in society. The women were the elders. The women were the wisdom keepers. The women were like, there's, there's stories about the men, you know, their role um, in, you know, providing like the hunter and gatherer kind of uh, society there as well. But they would have gone to the women and said, okay, when is a good time to go to sea? When is it, where should we go to fish? Like they would have come to them um, for guidance and spiritual advice around everything in life. So the women were really. I think that's true too of indigenous 
I think I believe so. And actually, I have read before, I can't quote it today, it's something that maybe I'll revisit and talk about at a later date, that connection between the practices and the beliefs of the Lumerians, and then some of the indigenous cultures are similar and overlapping. So I think that's interesting. And I, I got goosebumps as they say that. So I don't know, for me, this feels like truth, like, in some some way. Um, but yeah, that that androgynous kind of appearance, um, and that they were taller, taller, graceful comes through. Um, ability to find it easier to balance energy because they would have been that uh, human and also star. Um, something interesting I read um, on a website was about how you know it, it they, they developed slower, which I thought was interesting in terms of huh. puberty. Or something oh. like that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why that's or like what that's about. Um, drawn to symbols and geometric ge geometric shapes, which I thought was so cool because you know me and geometric shapes. And actually, I had this really cool download come in. I don't know if you saw it or you heard about it. Um, it was during one of my Reiki experiences this weekend, in which I was seeing geometric shapes again, like energy, and I heard the word kaleidoscope, and then my a logical mind wanted to separate from the meditation and go, what's a kaleidoscope again? Like I knew what it was, but I was so into the channeling, the, the meditation that, and then I felt like, no, like go back to it, go back to it. Like just, you like just stay with the meditation. And I kept seeing, hearing med kaleidoscope. And then I kept hearing live your life as a kaleidoscope. And I was like, weird and then afterwards I shared this wild experience that I actually ended up googling kaleidoscope and Reiki together and a lot of things came up including Dr. Joe Dispenza who has a, a kaleidoscope meditation and then I found another website um, by a meditation teacher and her name was Noelle Vignola and I can link her um, the specific uh, article that she wrote that blew my mind but it was essentially it was essentially talking about how spirit spirit would see like a worse spirit but like seeing our human lives the entirety of them like every single life like a kaleidoscope just as patterns and shapes and and it just keeps moving and how there's nothing wrong and everything's beautiful and there's no mistakes and it just makes this beautiful pattern and so by living your life as a kaleidoscope you'd essentially be living your life as that spiritual being viewing your life knowing there's no mistakes and just that's such a beautiful analogy. It was amazing. It blew my mind. I'm like metaphor. Sorry, metaphor. Really, like wow, that's so cool. It blew my mind because I'm like they gave me kaleidoscope and live my life as a kaleidoscope, and then I found that and I was like, woo. Uh, anyway, so that you know, it just says drawn to symbols and geometric shapes because the Lemurian language was based on symbols. Um, also, the Lemurians were said to have a youthful appearance. So that's the physicality of them. Um, you know, like this interpretation, they, they do kind of look Hawaiian, right? Yeah. Um, it's interesting too, that you said that they were taller because there's, there's also, I don't know if there's evidence, but there are people who, um, have said that we are descendants of giants or that they're like, people were giant, like there were giants like that, that it was like a, a thing. So just kind of wondering if that's somehow connected, maybe not necessarily giants in the storybook sense, but that we were a lot taller. We were just very big. Yeah, very much bigger, yeah. Um, so I wrote, although Lemurians were a human race, they have their origins from elsewhere, right? Like star beings. Um, they arrived here that, well, Pleiadians would have come and now they're, I guess, Lemurians would be thought of as star seeds, helping to bring humanity from the pure animal, you know, the, the instincts um, to spiritual beings. So that was their whole purpose. And like I said, um, although it, it doesn't feel like it uh, wants to separate in the sense like only some of us can be Lemurian, because according to this information, we all would have Lemurian roots at some at some life. Um, yeah, and would have spent probably multiple lifetimes there. Um, now, what's been said to happen is that um, over time, this land mass started to sink. Mm -hmm. And um, that the people would have had to flee. So uh, it's been said that they went to, you know, uh, towards Indonesia, like India, that area of the world, and then others um, to North America, but they would have, they would have left. Um, and then, you know, humanity, mankind would have just continued to go as it is. But apparently, 
that, that, I think that's why I resonate with it is that like it's kind of spiritual consciousness side to it. Um, so then I was kind of looking up this I read from LemurianConnection.com. So it says 25,000 years ago, Atlantis and Lemurian were the two most highly civilized civilizations on earth. That's when things went south. Here's the explanation below. Dissension between the two, Atlantis and Lemuria, arose regarding the development and evolution of other civilizations. The Lemurians believed that the other less evolved cultures should be left alone to continue their own evolution at their own pace, according to their own understanding and pathway. Whereas the Atlanteans believed that less evolved cultures should be controlled by the two more evolved civilizations. Their argument over ideologies resulted in several thermonuclear wars which weakened both continental plates when the wars were over and the dust had settled there were no winners only death destruction and further debasing of the human spirit to the point that both sides realized the futility of such behaviors interesting i mean and like we kind of see that a little bit today too i feel like that's kind of leading into controlling let's control let's control let's let figure out and learn it themselves at their own pace and i mean that's colonization isn't it like that's like the atlantean peace feels the atlantean peace like, feels more right, like that's what i mean that yeah darker, yeah that that's the feel <sighs> right so that's sorry cool. guys yeah no, but that's okay because it's that's kind of validating that too, right? Like it's not to say Atlantis, Atlantis was bad, but you know, from that lens, you, you know, if that was the belief, you can kind of even see how that plays out in her society too. Um, now, um, let's see what else I've got. So I was um, there's this the Lemurian connection. It's like an actual place that you can go to, like. Um, not like a university but i guess a place to learn oh that's cool um, I know that. yeah so according to them the history of lemuria goes back to i don't even know this number four thousand four million five hundred thousand bc yeah, when civilization ago. a long time ago when civilization ruled the earth a continent of lemuria was located in the pacific ocean and extended from western united states and canada to the lands in the indian ocean and madagascar so it's huge um, and then we have got that information come up about how it potentially was um, destroyed or why they would have both sunk and had to start over. Um, so Lemurian Fellowship, which is connected to this uh, Lemurian connection, um, teaches they so they teach you can go there and you can learn things okay and they teach things that range from reincarnation to karma to um balancing your life and just you know the yin and the yang and all that kind of stuff um their philosophy includes concepts of cosmic or universal law and various various principles associated with the application of these laws um according to the fellowship the lemurian philosophy was revealed to stell S-T-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Stell, by highly advanced men and women called Masters or Elder Brothers. Did something come up before about Masters or something with Atlantis? No? Okay. The philosophy is said- They were just uh, half, half human, half gods, apparently, according to a Plato, I think. Okay. The philosophy is said to have been, f to have formed the foundation of the so-called Mucilian civilization on the legendary continent of Mew, also known as Lemuria. That's another thing. Sometimes Lemuria will be written as Mew, just M U, um, which is now covered by the Pacific o Ocean. One principle is that of living balanced lives and particularly to acquire balanced growth within oneself in three areas spiritual, material, and physical, and mental or physical and mental to assist towards achieving balanced growth students work to build their character through developing 12 primary virtues precision efficiency for forbearance i don't know what that means to you forbearance uh patience discrimination kindliness tolerance devotion sincerity sincerity courage charity and humility so interesting um it's lemurians the importance of balance is huge um, it's considered to hold not only for the development of individuals, but for groups of individuals and nations as well. Um, for example, one of the most, one of the principles said to have guided this government was no organized society can hope to prosper permanently, except as each member, therefore, 
thereof prospers, and no individual member can hope to prosper permanently except as the group or society as a whole prospers. This I feel like this is why I'm so drawn to them because I just it, it's so connected to my own views of spirituality. Um, yeah, so I thought that was cool. Um, and I wanted to bring up, you know, the, the similar, when you were bringing up the destruction of Atlantis and the misuse of power and um, how in this it also brought up, um, you know, that things began to change in 2012 and it wasn't really the end of the world or ever thought, meant to be thought of it that way. It was just, it's time to create the new earth. It's time to turn things around. And actually that, um, you know, he's Chiron is channeled that we did start to turn it around. Like we actually have surprised some of the other <laughs> universes. They're like, whoa, they're turning it around. Like they can do this, right? Because the thought was that. We we wouldn't. We would be lost like the Atlanteans and the Lemurians. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, there's this really cool part too about like um, there's so many connection to the earth and there's also connection with the Lemurians and crystals so they've said like that they've stored like it's almost like underground knowledge and with Mount Shasta too it's like the uh the mountain itself is almost infused with Palladian energy and knowledge and kept like very sacred um and so there's a connection with crystals actually to Lemurians and it's believed that the Lemurians use crystals as communication tools um, and so modern day believers say that Lemurians program these cre crystals to teach their messages of oneness and healing to, to us. Crystals are revered by modern day Lemurian believers. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, it was interesting when I was doing some of that research on, um, Atlantis, um, somebody where, I don't I can't remember where I saw this, but it was one of the articles that I read. One of the, um, I think they are also a mystic or an intuitive in some form, but they said that the reason why, I mean, this was just a theory, but that um, New York City was particularly hit hard by um, the coronavirus was because it's it's like built on uh, a type of crystal. Um, the crystalline grid? Maybe. But and it's the the type of crystal that it, it that it is causes um, us to feel things at a much deeper level. It like really impacts. Yeah, interesting because I just opened up to a page um, that says the Lemurians re represented the relationship between Gaia and humanity, and in a spiritual way established their energy on the crystalline grid. Um. Let me see what else it says here. Because there's stuff about the crystalline grid. Um, and this is it's interest this is interesting. It's very interesting. I think that we should come back and revisit that in more um we definitely do more specifically. But there's certain like there's actually a thing in this book that shows um nodes and nulls. So it says since 2012, the nodes and nulls of the planet have all been identified, opened, and activated. Slowly, multidimensional information is being broadcasted to the Earth's grid, allowing for higher consciousness, invention, and human DNA evolution. The nodes and nulls are hooked into the benevolent design of the universe. Um, as of writing of this... As of the writing of this book, Chiron has identified nine of the 12 matched pairs shown on the table below. So it's got Maui, Hawaii with the uh tibetan mountains um tibet is there mexico africa shot mount shasta turkey um it's it, australia with the yukon like it's just it's very interesting um apparently you know these grids are being activated and and helping with our evolution our consciousness which i think is that's really cool. super cool yeah super cool I, I love all this stuff. Like, I feel like we could go so many different places with it. Like, even when we talk about, like, it makes me think too, when we talk about like extraterrestrials, right. Or, um, beings out from, not from our planet, our planet, right. Every time, like sometimes when they, they come, not everybody experiences this, but some people who have experienced these beings say that it's all about, you know, peace and love and harmony and trying to like protect our planet. And so sometimes there's like there's been reports of like when they come to visit us, some of it has been about stopping a nuclear war. Some of it has been about stopping all of these like events that could 
could have happened to destroy our, our stuff. So I almost wonder, maybe some of it is, maybe that is the Palladian energy. Maybe they're Palladians, I don't know, coming down and helping our earth. Yeah. 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 Because like I said, the, the, it's, you know, it's, it's apparently the, it's, the Lemurians are that, that bridge, that connection between the earth yeah. and humans. Wow. Right? Ah. Because I, I honestly believe that the reflection of like what happens inside is what happens outside. And it, it feels like, it feels like earth is a, almost like a spiritual entity entity in itself. And it's just meant to be that, i um, trying to think of what that word is like that transmutes things, you know, it, it, it transmutes. It's like, you know, like it's, it's kind of like when we think about thought creates, but it, you know, it needs to play catch up. So everything that we're dealing with right now with earth is because of uh, what we thought, what we've done before. Right. And it's just reflecting. So when you have a sick earth, you have a sick yes. collective in some way. Yeah. Right. And it's about healing both of it. So for me, I feel like, it's hopeful in the sense of like, as we expand, as we, cause I feel like with that spiritual consciousness and that um, expansion of consciousness, I feel like a lot of us all of a sudden do start to see the connection um, and how important earth is and home is. And we start to see the interconnectivity of everything. And then therefore we want to treat it better because we see it as an uh, extension of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense for me that as we become more, uh, you know, conscious, we would pay more attention to things environmentally perhaps as well. And ever, ever, when you're, we're talking about to these, um, like these civilizations that have been lost, it's not so maybe, maybe I'm stretching, but it doesn't feel that far of a stretch to say, maybe it's just the earth reincarnating. Um, because every incarnation that we have as souls, we learn. Right. And so it, it's just a way to help, earth evolve and and grow in a way that maybe it's it's meant to evolve and grow and as we saw with the atlanteans that did not happen which i'm very glad we talked about lumeria after because we we needed to bring folks back up <laughs> we needed that high vibe energy <laughs> you know i just i just feel like the earth is our mirror right and it and it it, it transmutes and it's a reflection of us. And I just feel it, but it feels kind of hopeful in the sense, like, you know, as we work on ourselves, as we expand our consciousness, that yeah, it does. our outer will start to reflect the inner. Mm -hmm. That makes me feel a little Absolutely. bit better. Absolutely. <laughs> now, I, I, I know that we haven't been pulling cards at the end very often anymore because we're trying to be mindful of time and, and we are mindful of time now. But I just really quickly wanted to pull a card from this. Yay. Okay. I was going to ask if you were going to do that still. So. Because it's literally like a Mur Lemurian deck and it's very beautiful. And um, so I'm going to do that really quickly. And then uh, yeah, please. We'll, we'll, and catch you, we'll catch you next time. Shout out to the listener who uh, suggested also that you pull from. Pull a card from here. Well, that listener also has this deck. Okay. Interesting. I kind of had a feeling it was going to be uh, one of the chakra cards. What? Yeah, I did. Okay, I really I love did. It. It, this, this deck is. Um, you know, it's got the chakras and then it has the elements and then it also has, you know, just different, um, different, not, not like categorized uh, cards, but the chakra cards, we're going to do the, it's, we got the third Irish chakra, which I love, number eight, um, pineal perspective, it says like pineal. Oh, pineal look at that right? beautiful pyramid too. Look at that. Right. Oh, it's so interesting. Cause I had a pyramid come in too, um, in one of my, uh, visions when I was doing the Reiki training, but it was a pink, it was, it was, no, it wasn't a pink pyramid. It was that I saw a pyramid and it was at first glance, I thought, are we in like a pink world? Like, why is everything pink? Um, the sky was pink, like that beautiful, like pinky purple orange on a, the most beautiful sunset. The sky was like that. There was sand below my feet and the, the sand was like blowing. It was almost like a dust storm in a sense. And then there was pyramids and they were there's three and they were glass as i got closer Whoa. i could see they were glass they were just reflecting the sky on them but somebody else in the group as well brought through something about pyramids and i was like there's something in here like i don't know if it's another realm like what what that was about but there was no like life as we would know it like it wasn't like there was trees or grass it was just sand yeah wow sand and glass pyramids so anyways um 
we've got this, which again brings the colors and the geometric shapes and the and yeah, the there it is, DNA strands. Yeah, which yeah, I didn't talk about DNA, but there was a piece in there about also a DNA piece and how DNA would have changed with Lemurians. Uh, added an extra one in there than before, and I don't know if there's scientific proof to say that the, we that our DNA has changed um over time or I, what. I think it has. Okay. Hasn't it? Well, it talks about that in that book too. If, you, if anybody's interested, it's called Women of Lemuria, and I actually found it fascinating. So this says this chakra is the origin of expression. It is the source of the life spark that inspires our aliveness and strokes the creative fires in others. This is the outer sharing of our inner being. We just talked about the outer reflecting the inner, so I thought that was cool. The glowing song of our soul on the winds of our flight to an understanding, to understanding more of who we are. Connect to the crux crux c-r-u-x i never i'm terrible at pronouncing things the crux of your potential and take it further than you could have imagined as spirit fuses with the tangible it actualizes as a platform for greater experience and new facets are sculpted seeded and shared as a fractal light in the form of our own unique language interesting i think that really has to do with channeling and bringing things in thought creates and all that stuff um be so the message here is be truthful with yourself about how you are really feeling if you always act in integrity and follow your heart center truth some unhealthy connections or aspects of your life may fall away and you will be in com you will be in complete alignment with your path in this way your internal psychic navigation system will become strengthened your purpose will be clear and you will inspire others through the sparkle of your deep inner knowing um interesting interesting really love that that really feels like a palladian message <laughs> and even the color well right? i was gonna say the color is blue and yeah, well, it says at the bottom, healing position, throat. I did the wrong thing. You know what I just did? I read from the throat chakra and not the third eye chakra page. There must have been a reason for that. I must have meant to give you the message about the throat chakra. Because I'm like, why are we talking about throat? And did you notice too, Amy, even, was it this episode we did? You had a tickle in your throat. And I think I did too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I did that. We pulled the third eye. I read from the throat, but that's okay. This is really, I'm not going to read the whole thing for you, but just quickly, um, examining limiting ideas, listen more, balance the left hemisphere's logical and analytic thinking with inner guidance and deep seated wisdom. The Lemurians are all about the balance between the masculine and the feminine. Take note of any thought patterns that may be holding you from your fullest potential. Although, sorry, through the mind-based spheres of past experiences. Colors, deep indigo blue, position is here, the seed of wisdom. So it's just really ask. I think it's really cool because it's saying you can tune in into the wisdom at will as it, as and when you wish to. The wisdom is ancient yet pioneering, it is the creator of the free will. I find that really cool. To unravel the paradoxes of reality. Anyways, I think we needed both messages today, both the throat and the third eye. I know for me, a lot of throat chakra stuff has been coming up. Oh, there. Yeah, it's all linked. Express yourself, be truthful, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, be true to you guys. What a great way to wrap up and like, that was awesome, Amy. Thank you. That was so well done. Oh, thank you. I'm kind of like, I have so many things to say and not enough time to say it. Like I said, we're going to, we're going to revisit this. As There's some more Atlanta stuff I'd like to look into too. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, moving forward, um, this episode will be airing in, I think, mid-October. Oh my God. So, yeah. Happy October. Yeah. Yeah. Happy October. My favorite month of the whole year. Please visit us next week because the next episodes we're going to be uh, doing a little bit of a spooky season theme so we're going to bring forward some woo. some woo we're going to yeah, be bringing maybe, in the woo yeah maybe some <laughs> mythical stuff some folklore you know like aliens bigfoot whatever yeah we're, we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna do it stuff. yeah anything wacky and weird will be happening in the next couple episodes for you guys I'm into it so have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. If you like what you're hearing, don't forget to give us a five-star review on Apple Podcast and tune in each week as we dish on all things spiritual. Don't forget to like, comment on what you would like to hear us talk about next and subscribe.